so so far in this class uh, we've discussed you know that country's trade right we've just said that country's trade and that was sort of where we left it but we haven't really discussed why countries trade okay so we know that they do it that's obvious right but we don't really understand at least so far why okay so today we're going to work on the why okay so we understand in the US uh, that we import oil from other countries that we import textiles and clothing and other things like that from other countries but why why don't we just do all these things by ourselves and just kind of be self-sufficient you know especially uh, in a world where we say we want to be energy independent or uh, maybe we want to not depend on Chinese steel or maybe we want to um, you know, just be self-sufficient, right? Why don't why don't we just do everything in the United States completely by ourselves? Okay, and the answer lies in a concept that economists call comparative advantage. Okay, put simply, comparative advantage illustrates the idea of opportunity costs. Okay. <clears throat> and an opportunity cost is of course the value of the next <coughs> excuse me best alternative. Okay? So comparative advantage talks about opportunity costs and what we can do uh, instead of other things. Okay, so let's do an example. Suppose that the US can produce in one month, uh, in one month, can produce, let's say, 10 million roses or 100,000 computers, okay? <clears throat> so what is the opportunity cost of producing 10 million roses, right? In this case, it's 100,000 computers, okay? And what is the opportunity cost of producing the computers? It's the 10 million roses, right? We can do one or the other. We can either make 10 million roses or 100,000 computers. Okay, and so we can just graph this really quickly. Okay, so we'll say roses are here uh, and computers are here. And this would be 10 million. And this is uh, 100,000. And so uh, I'll use a different color just because I have multiple colors. We would just draw a straight line between these two, okay? <clears throat> and what this says is that we can give up, if we're producing all roses, we can give up, let's say, a million roses, all right? And we can come down to producing nine million roses, and that will enable us to produce 10, or 90, sorry, 90,000. Uh, nope, 10,000, sorry, 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 10,000 computers, right? <clears throat> and we could go down to, you know, 5 million and come over here, and this would enable us to produce, let's say, 50,000 computers, okay? So we can produce 10 million roses or 100,000 computers or any linear combination along this curve or this line. Okay, of the two products, roses and computers. Okay? <clears throat> and so we can think about this as saying, you know, for every computer or one computer costs the US uh, 100 roses or 
we can think of one rose costs uh, 0 0.01 computers. Okay, these are equivalent. This thing here, this this statement here is equivalent to these statements here. Okay, so the slope of the line here illustrates the opportunity cost. So this slope uh, right here, this slope, this line of this, the slope of this red line here refers to the opportunity cost of producing roses and computers, okay? <clears throat> so now, how do we determine comparative advantages? Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, pick on two of my friends. Uh, their names are uh, Lewis and Jill. And Jill, all right, they are uh, a married couple. They're very good friends of mine. Uh, and they, when I moved, you know, from uh, from graduate school to my first job, they were kind enough to let me stay with them for a couple of weeks until uh, I could move into, you know, my place. Uh, so I got to observe them. Now, Lewis and Jill are a very peculiar couple uh, in terms of what they do uh, on weeknights. And so they tend to do basically the same thing. And so let's just, you know, go through two things that I observe them doing. So... Uh, we have, let's say, Lewis here, and we have Jill here, and two things that they do a lot of is they make pizza, uh, homemade pizza, which is very good, so thank you guys for, for feeding me, uh, and they also, uh, periodically at least, uh, clean, okay? So we have, uh, let's say, clean rooms, okay? And so, in any at any time, they can either be making pizza or cleaning rooms. Okay. Now, uh, Lewis uh, is pretty good at making pizzas. Let's say he could make five pizzas in a day. Uh, and because Lewis, as it turns out, uh, is part owner of a boat washing co uh, company, uh, he's actually very good at cleaning things. Uh, so he can clean ten rooms uh, per day. And Jill, uh, she grew up in a, a family that cooks a lot, and so uh, she can make eight pizzas in a day, um, but uh, she can only clean four rooms per day. Okay, so she, uh, these are just relative things that they can do, right? Jill can spend her day making pizzas and produce eight, or she can spend her day cleaning and she can, she can clean four rooms. Uh, Lewis on the other hand, could spend his entire day making pizzas, and he would have five, or he can spend his entire day cleaning rooms, and he would clean ten rooms, okay? And so this is uh, just some uh, relative comparisons of what they can do, okay? So let's just think about this, okay? So first thing we should note is that when it comes to cleaning rooms, Lewis can do, can clean more rooms than Jill can. So we would note that Lewis has an absolute advantage in cleaning rooms. Okay, just because Lewis, the number here, is bigger than the other one. And we can also note that Jill has an absolute advantage in making pizzas because eight is bigger than five. So Jill has an absolute advantage in making pizza, okay? So we just, we know that right off the bat just from looking at this table. But now let's think about comparative advantages. Okay, so for Lewis, one room costs him how many pizzas? Okay, so to figure this out, we need to compare these two numbers. We need to compare this way. So what we can do is 
divide both of these by 10 to get us 1 over here, and this will give us a half over here, which means that for Lewis, he has to give up half a pizza to clean a room. Okay? And conversely, one pizza costs Lewis how many rooms? Well, so now what we're going to do is we're going to divide these two numbers by 5, okay? Because that'll get us 1 here, and it'll give us a 2 over here, which says that every pizza that Lewis makes costs him two clean rooms. Uh, Jill, on the other hand, right, one uh, room costs her how many pizzas? Okay, so here we're looking at these two numbers. Let's divide both of them by four, right? That will get us one here and two right there. And one pizza costs Jill how many rooms? Right, well now we're still looking at these two numbers and we're gonna divide by eight, right? So we wanna get this number here to be one. So we divide by eight, we divide by eight, and we see that one pizza will cost Jill half of a room. Okay, so the question becomes, who gives up the fewest number of pizzas to clean a room? Okay, so in this case, we're gonna compare this number here to this number here. So notice that for Lewis, he has to give up half a pizza to clean a room, and Jill has to give up two pizzas to clean a room. So we would say that Lewis has the comparative advantage in cleaning rooms because he gives up the fewest amount of pizza. Okay? And conversely, we can figure out who has the comparative advantage in making pizza. Okay? So in this case, we're going to compare this number to this number, and we see that Jill gives up the fewest rooms to make a pizza. She is the least cost producer of pizzas. She gives up fewer rooms than Lewis does. And so we would say that Jill has the comparative advantage in uh, making pizzas. So Lewis, comparative advantage here. Jill, comparative advantage there. So in cases where the abs each person has an absolute advantage in one of the products or one of the things, they also have a comparative advantage in, excuse me, in that as well. Okay, let's do a potentially uh, more difficult example. Okay, so let's pick on um, uh, myself and my brother. So we'll do, um, this is uh, David and John. Okay, and since I'm the older brother, uh, I'm going to pick on him quite a bit and say uh, that I can, we'll do folding laundry. And we'll say uh, baking cookies. Two things that my brother and I apparently do a lot of. Okay. And since I'm the older brother, obviously I am superior at everything. And so let's say my brother John can fold two loads of laundry in a day, or he can bake two batches of cookies per day. Okay. I, on the other hand, because I am so much better and so much uh, older and superior to him in every way, uh, I can fold uh, 12 loads of laundry in one day, and I can bake six batches of cookies. So I am just superior to my brother in everything. So David has an absolute advantage. in laundry and cookies, or cookie production. All right, so I am superior. I'll do this, All right? I have my red stars, 
right? <clears throat> I have an absolute advantage in everything. I am better at my brother at folding laundry, and I am better than him at baking cookies, okay? But let's think about our comparative advantages. Okay, so for me, <clears throat> one laundry costs how many cookies? Okay, so divide by 12, divide by 12, and we see that for me to fold laundry only requires me to give up half a batch of cookies. Conversely, one cookie or one batch of cookies costs me two loads of laundry, right? Because I divide by six, I divide by six, right? 12 divided by six is two, so I get uh, two loads of laundry. For John, one load of laundry costs him how many cookies? Well, I divide by two, I divide by two, and we get one, okay? And one cookie, costs him one load of laundry, right? Again, divide by two, divide by two. Okay, so <clears throat> who has the comparative advantage in, let's say, doing laundry, right? So for doing laundry, for me, right, I give up half a batch of cookies to do a load of laundry. My brother gives up a whole batch of cookies to do a load of laundry. So I have a comparative advantage in folding laundry, okay? Whoops. <clears throat> now, when it comes to uh, baking cookies, right, for me to bake a batch of cookies costs me two loads of laundry. For my brother, it only costs him one. So we would say that John has a comparative advantage in baking cookies cookies okay so even though I am I have an absolute advantage in baking cookies my brother has a comparative advantage in baking cookies he is relatively better at baking cookies than I am because he gives up fewer loads of laundry than I do per batch okay so if we wanted to produce the most amount of folded laundry and cookies in our household which would be a very strange household, but we could do it, then what we would want to do is have me fold all the laundry and John bake all the cookies. And if we did that, then we would have the most cookies and laundry done. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> how do we figure out who should do what? We check their comparative advantages, okay? And the reason why what we can do from this is we can determine people's PPFs. Okay, so let's do that real quick. All right, we'll say this is laundry and these are cookies. Okay, so uh, for me, I have 12 and six, and John has uh, two and two. So here's John's. And here's mine. If I had drawn this better, they wouldn't be exactly parallel. Uh, so that's bad, but that's okay. Right? And what we can do is we can see each other's comparative advantages and our PPF curves. So even though, again, I am better than him at everything, which is why my PPF curve is further out than his, uh, he still has the comparative advantage in baking cookies. Okay? So... <clears throat> so there, there's that, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, let's, in the next video, we'll go through uh, determining uh, these numbers here based on the amount of labor and productivity of labor.